He saw me do the microcontroller program, and uh, that works fine, but uh, looking from a user's perspective, maybe the community wants to do something more interesting. So when I get home, I'm going to bring out the breadboard and do the circuit. And hopefully we will have a circuit for you to build and uh, people can buy the board over at Osh Park or wherever they like. They can download the design files. So, and they don't have to program any microcontroller. So, and I think it will work almost as good as with the microcontroller. So we'll see, we'll see about that. Yeah, it's getting cold. <laughs> I'm I had so much problem with this uh, camera app. So, oh, there's a person walking. Shit. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh, that was brutal. So, I'm glad to get home. I've taken a shower, so I'm now hot again. So let's look at the signals first. You have the restore button, which is active low. Active when it's low anyway, so if you put shit quickly, nothing shall happen. But if you have a longer, something is supposed to happen. And uh, we need a something that can scroll through all the programs or the uh, kernels so we need something a stable a, a stable god after that comment the other day <laughs> I'm um, <laughs> someone commented on my accent so so I'm constantly thinking about what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny, but um, you know, you know how it is. So anyway, uh, we do not want the reset line to go low unless we have. Uh, we have pressed the button for long enough so 
but um, if you have a long restore press then it should scroll through for every one of these okay but we don't want this clock to uh, to get out unless we have pressed for a while so what we can do then is um, if you if you have the restore key and you have like a um, diode and then connect that to the A stable if you have your 555 timer and then you have this uh, charge capacitor connected to two resistors up to 5 volt uh, the discharge pin um, discharges this capacitor through this uh, resistor down to ground. So, if you put a diode here, like this, um, then interface that with restore. What happens then? Okay, let's see what happens then. Then we have to look at this, uh, let's call it cap, V cap. What does it look like? Well, when the restore is high, it will then be pulled up to restore via this uh, diode. So, But it won't go to 5 volt, it will go to 4.4 because it's... Uh, about uh, six or seven hundred millivolt drop over that. So, but it doesn't matter. It's still a logic high signal. But once it uh, releases, uh, this um, discharge will then start to discharge the capacitor. So it will drop like this. But since the restore goes up again, it goes up. So the idea here is that in the in the five five timer the level of the capacitor has to move down to I think it's one third before it actually oops sorry and or two thirds to turn it on again this is the resist you know so uh, this short press won't do anything so what happens over here then and now the discharge uh, circuit is now um, it's always on anyway but this uh, pull up is now released because restore goes down and then this one is reverse biased and uh, therefore you can look away from this so it starts to discharge and let's see the slope is supposed to be the same like this and um, after a while it will hit the threshold and it will go up again and it go down again and then boom the restore button is released so therefore this uh, V cap will go up so what happens on the output on the uh, 555 timer then but when we come here it will go up until it starts to go down again like this. So there you have it. Uh, had we hold the button longer you will get a sequence of these pulses. So what can we do with these pulses? Well if you have a counter, let's say it starts at zero, 0. Now once the uh, counter is triggered with a clock it will change. So we go to zero one. And uh, we can uh, draw restore again. Let's look at V cap. We can also control how fast it rises or goes down with the uh, with these two resistors. So right. So what happens to the counter? The counter will change wherever. That's a positive edge like this so so first you have zero then you have one 
and then I have a 2, and then I have a 3, and then it goes back to 0 if you have a 2 bit counter. So, how do I w uh, plan to make this uh, 2 bit counter? Well, I'm thinking of just using two uh, D flip flops. You have the data pen, then you have the clock input. So, let's say this is a um, 74 LS 74. Like we see in the other project, they use uh, the flip flop, but they use it in another way. You use the reset on the input here to clock in whatever you press at the startup of the program. But uh, here we are feeding in the uh, output. So, um, so let's say output or out is connected to the clock, and then the uh, how do you get this one to go from 0 to 1? Well, you can take the negated output and feed it back to the data inputs. Because if you do that, the next time you get a clock pulse, it will uh, change the output here. So, is uh, Q0 and Q1, they are inverted also. What you end up with so that's the sequence, and that's the sequence you want also, because then you are scrolling through all the possible kernels that you have. And now if you call Q1 for A14 and Q0, not only call them, but <laughs> we attach them, these outputs there, directly to A14 and A13. So yeah, what about the reset signal? I forgot that one. Well, normally it is high. So we want it to hold the computer in reset for all of this. Okay, yeah, because you want to, after you have, um, if you call this address line, 13 to 14 this is not the correct way of drawing it but let's say this is the value I have on those two vectors then uh, whenever it changes you also want to reset the com computer so but what you see here is <laughs> exactly an inversion of the uh, the uh, signal so so in the C64 you have a circuit that looks like this and then of course there are some devices connected to it that uh, listens to it. Also the one driving it is a uh, 7406. If it's a 7404 then it won't work because 7406 is an open collector it's, uh, let's draw it under here instead. So that's what uh, the uh, output of the uh, 7406 looks like. And when it releases, this one is pulled up to 5 volts. So, what will our circuit do then? Well, where, whenever the output is high, we want a transistor like this to turn on. Let's uh, just uh, limit the current into that transistor let's say 100k, it's not important at least this is important so you can drive the current needed to pull it through here and get a, a low enough voltage over here so. so there we have our circuit I have built it into, or I've drawn it into LT Spice and I have the two flip-flops which I don't have physically Right now I only have the 555 timer, so I will build this one now in this video. I have uh, the restore key I have simulated with a pulse source via a uh, diode, which will choke or keep this from uh, oscillating. So this 55 timer is uh, configured to be a, um, a stable flip-flop. 
So, here you can see the restore button will go down and be held for like 8 seconds, which is goes up again and it st starts over. So, you can see 3, which is the voltage over the capacitor, which is the one which uh, oscillates, and then uh, triggers some thresholds in here which then changes the output so we get a uh, pulse signal so here you have the intraset which is over here which is basically just an inversion of the uh, output so you can see the output here is just inverted of the interest or vice versa and the output is fed into the clock here therefore you have a change for every positive going edge uh, every time this one goes down it will be a change so, so you can see that this one goes doubles as fast as this therefore I have called it A13 and A14 so this will con <coughs> control the, uh, the ROM so here you have 0, 1 two three in binary and then back to zero and then one and then we release the button and you can see that the, these memory elements they remember the last state here are some components that I'm going to use so but I I had to check that uh, these pull-ups that I just assumed was correct like uh, here and they weren't so <laughs> so if I look at the schematic of the Commodore 64 you can see down here you have interest there you have 1k so that's okay it's a bit uh, harder to drive than I thought but uh, no problem so it will be 5 milliamps no problem and uh, down here you can see the uh, restore goes down there and you see one mega ohm you see it there that's the problem because if you look at my circuit again you can see that we are almost in the mega ohm range here so that means to pull it up to one mega ohm okay I put the generic diode back in and uh, now I remember why this is a problem because if this one is in discharge mode this is trying to pull it up well there will be a voltage division between this one and this one so you can see we can't get it up to 4.4 just uh, drops down here so when you push the button you can look at the output also yeah you can see there's almost no delay there so what can you do about that well or <laughs> what can we do well just amplify it instead um, you can see here we still have the diode over there like before if you use a NPN transistor however if you do it like this transistor is amplifying that uh, current co that comes from the one meg so uh, let's run it again you can see or you can see what I mean now the voltages has uh, come up and it takes time for it to trigger so 